Welcome to Change, sponsored by the Senior Bond of Schomburg, where nutritious meals and friendly peers and social activities are available every day of the week, all under the able direction of Maria, um, Marina Lavovich. The cost and location are available to all. And we usually meet every month to talk about the past and discuss how it influences the present as well as the future. And today we're going to be talking about giving thanks. I'd like to introduce our panel first. We have Michael uh, Demnicki. He was born in Chicago, but now is a resident of Schomburg. And he attended St. Hubert's School in Schomburg, St. Viator, a real true local boy, high school in Arlington Heights, and received a biology degree from Loyola University. Then he went on to the mortuary science in Wheeling, Illinois, and also has a law degree from St. Louis University in St. Louis, Missouri, well versed. Then we have Doree Bryant. She was born in Oklahoma City, a foreigner to all of us, but now lives in Roselle. She has a master's degree in marriage and family therapy, and she is supervisor of human services for the village of Schomburg. And we have Ke Kevin Carnahan, who is really new to the area in a sense. He was born in Elmhurst and now lives in Roscoe Village in uh, Chicago. He's a graduate of Willowbrook High School in Villa Park and holds a degree from Eastern Illinois University in Charleston. And he is the Business Development Director for Brookdale Senior Living in Hoffman Estates. And Kevin is one to go to as you age and need other accommodations. And I say welcome to you all and thank you for taking care of all our needs through life. Doree helps us, you know, get over the trials and tribulations of family life and growing up. And we have uh, Kevin that will take care of guiding us and navigating us through the waters of aging. And of course, we have Michael, who is the last one to let us down. <laughs> <laughs> That's an oldie but a good. <laughs> Well, when one gives thanks, it's usually for something that happened, and rarely it's for the future, although it is possible. Having a day set aside, especially for giving thanks, we have to look back into history. The early settlers, the colonists in Virginia in 1619 and those in Plymouth in 1621 set aside days to thank God and others, that in spite of, spite of their many hardships and deaths and illnesses, they were able to survive. In the early days of our fledgling country, Presidents George Washington and James Madison issued Thanksgiving proclamations. But it was President Abraham Lincoln in 1863 who established it as a formal and regular holiday being celebrated on the last Thursday in November. Andrew Jackson was the first to give government employees the day off. In 1941, Congress did pass a bill, and FDR signed it, giving a fixed date of the fourth Thursday in November as a national Thanksgiving holiday. Food also is a tradition passed on through the generations for Thanksgiving. How the turkey became the symbol for this holiday has gone through so many stories, and it remains a mystery. This big bird is usually served with gravy, stuffing, sweet potatoes, and cranberries, but varies with family gatherings, and pumpkin pie usually is a must. And when I grew up, there was mincemeat pie. No matter the custom, food, or tradition, having the family come together is almost as important as the holiday itself. Let's reflect on some thoughts of Thanksgiving from our past years as a child growing up. As a child, how did your family celebrate the holiday? And is there anything that was done that made it special for you, Kevin? Well, um, <clears throat> I think just the family time together was special. And, and we were always the ones to host Thanksgiving. You know, every holiday goes somewhere else. 
So we were always ones to host Thanksgiving. And I would, I would wake up just about every morning to my mom making the homemade stuffing. And I would wake up to that smell of the butter and the celery and the onions on the stove. And it's, it's one of those things now when I'm cooking Thanksgiving dinner that that smell brings me right back to being five and six and seven years old. I'm anticipating Thanksgiving already. <laughs> How about you, Michael? Uh, well, un unlike Kevin, I, I had uh, my family, we always incorporated, because we're Polish, we incorporated uh, a lot more ethnic foods in, in our Thanksgiving meal. So we did have some turkey and things, but there was always the uh, well of uh, kapusta and pierogies and gwumpkis and... Kielbasa. Kielbasa, yes. <laughs> so that always added to the flavor profile. Um, so growing up for me, it's not necessarily a warm, necessarily a warm and comfortable feeling. It was more along spicy and just real heavy kind of type, type foods. Did you ever have kishki? I have, yes, I have. Had. I love it, I love it. Was there a special food that you hold dear in your memory, uh, Dury? Um, well, probably sweet potato casserole, which has now become my daughter's favorite also. And she wants it now more times of the year than just Thanksgiving. But just the other day she was saying, oh, I'm really looking forward to sweet potato casserole. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> very, very good. And that was started in your childhood. Yes. Who made it? Uh, I think I helped my mom make it. I mean, I was the oldest, so um, I was kind of the assistant in the kitchen. So um, I think she started it and then kind of taught me how to do it. So, mm -hmm. so that would you would say that would be a memory that has traveled sure. on from Absolutely. your childhood all the way up to the present time. Now, did any of you have any special songs that you learned in school or stories or activities? Uh, that your family participated in? Not, not from school, no. It was just uh, very traditional. Mm -hmm. um, is uh, The way we grew up, the traditional Thanksgiving, having everybody over, the traditional Thanksgiving dinner, like you had mentioned, the turkey and the dressing and the, the gravy and the sweet potatoes and the vegetables and the mashed potatoes and just, just very traditional. We didn't have any type of school influence mm -hmm. into our into our family celebration. Right. Well, I think I, remember, I always remember that song, Over the River and Through the Woods. Was, that seems like the <laughs> song is kind of associated with it, right? I was just right? thinking of that, Dury. Yeah. Over the River and Through, through the, the Woods to Grandmother's yeah. House we yeah. go. <laughs> but you hosted your own. Yes, so. we did. Was... Yeah. And then it seems like the traditional craft was that thing where you draw around your hand and make it look <laughs> like a turkey. Make the turkey, the tricks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> decorate it with feathers or right. whatever. Well, we're going to take a short break and we will be right back to continue our discussion. Thank you. Now that we are adults, not all of us are seniors. Are there any things that you've continued through childhood family gatherings? Why or why not? I know you continued your sweet potato <laughs> a casserole pie, but are there any things that you have continued now as an adult? Michael? Um, well, I think, I think now, you know, now that I know how to cook, Oh. Uh, or at least I think I know how to cook. Um, you know, it's always a challenge to try to come up with, I mean, with the internet and all the information we get today, come up with new and exciting ways to present the same food that we always eat every year. So, you know, we're always trying new, different recipes, little tweaks on different recipes, and it almost becomes almost like a competition. You know, you go to one person's house and it's like, oh, I like that stuffing, I didn't like that stuffing, you know. <laughs> so that, that's kind of how we've kind of developed our our traditions a little bit. Well, I know many people are getting rid of cookbooks because it's so easy. Look at Facebook. They have a yep. whole <laughs> proliferation of <laughs> recipes and you can find anything you want on the internet. How about you, uh, Kevin? Uh, we don't typically get together uh, at, at my mom's house like we used to. Uh, we've kind of changed once. I have three brothers, so I grew up with four boys in the family. Well, now we're all married and, and Thanksgiving and other holidays tend to be at our, our wives' houses. So we do still get together typically the Saturday before Thanksgiving now and because we have so many traditional Thanksgiving dinners throughout the season with our wives' families and everything else, we've, we've kind of tweaked it and changed it and we do an Italian themed dinner because my sister-in-law's family is from Italy. Oh, okay. So we do an Italian themed family dinner now prior to Thanksgiving, yeah. <laughs> Lasagna. Yeah, so it's changed a little bit but 
we still get together. We're still thankful to spend time together and, and right. be with each but other. But you do share. Everybody oh, yeah. shares. Now, when you meet, does everybody bring or contribute, or is it the person whose house? The person whose house makes the main meal. Okay. And then everybody who comes is either drinks or desserts or appetizers or something fun for the kids or, or anything. So. Well, that is yeah, really it's, it's nice. Yeah, it's a good time. Right. How about you, Dury? Uh, I think just the what's continued is just getting together with family and friends, and um, we try to start the meal off with some kind of reading or a poem or something that kind of gets us before we start digging in to try to remember that it's more than about the food. <laughs> it's also about you know what we're thankful for and uh, being together, and um, so before everybody <laughs> starts stuffing their face, we try to have some time where we're... A reflection yes, time. Yes, exactly. I think that is really, and I tried it once, but it bombed, so I didn't try it again. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, do you have anything to add to that? Um, well, obviously, I, I've grown up Catholic. You can tell by where I went to school. So, um, you know, we've always used to try to start with a prayer, and I, I, I agree. I mean, getting people in the mood beforehand so it doesn't turn into just this gorging fe feast of, you know, excess. Um, just to reflect on what's, who we are, our families, the year we've had, you know, successes and failures, and just thank, being thankful for what we've done. So. That is so, so true. You know, talking about thanking, do you think the present times and the influx of the different ethnicity groups, has it influenced America's outlook on Thanksgiving or has it remained the same? What do you think about that? Doree, you look like you're deep in thought here. Well, I, I think it's uh, kind of considered a traditional American holiday, but I think other, my observation is that other cultures have similar things from their culture. It might not be called Thanksgiving, but something that's kind of like that. So mm -hmm. I haven't, I mean, I think if it's how it's influenced, it might be kind of what you're talking about. Maybe there's more than just turkey, turkey. and dressing. There might be, we have Italian and Polish. And um, I, I think it's done, if it's done anything, it's enhanced it, not detracted from it, in my opinion. Okay, how about you, uh, Kevin? Uh, as far as the ethnicities, I think that every time that, that we have anybody that comes to our country, they kind of fall into the different things that we celebrate here. And Thanksgiving is definitely one of those. Uh, the thing that concerned me is in the past, you've seen the Christmas holiday just blow up. And I think somehow that has come to overshadow Thanksgiving, where it's Halloween's over. We're, we're putting out Christmas mm -hmm. decorations now. Even mm -hmm. before so, Halloween. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I've always been the one who said, I will not even put up a Christmas tree or even look at one until mm -hmm. after Thanksgiving has had its day. Right. Because yeah. it is Absolutely. important enough to our society and to our culture as something that we celebrate every year. So. Right. And last year they even had what Black Friday became, you know, early Black Thursday. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of hard. Michael, do you want to add anything to that, or? Um, you know, I, I mean, we've covered pretty well, but I, I would agree with what we've said. It's at the end of the day, you know, it's it's just um, you, you got to break everything down to the basics. Yeah, I mean, we've got different cultures, and we're all the whole country is a melting pot, right? So, um, you know, I think for folks that that aren't you know, typically uh, from here, um, yeah, they try to. I mean, you just you inherently forced to kind of absorb into the culture. And yeah, you, you probably you just try to enhance and maybe throw in your, your, your parts of your traditions to maybe enhance what's already there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how you leave a really nice legacy, right. share your traditions. And that's part of like what that. Thanksgiving is right. about, is the two cultures coming together and having a meal together. Correct. Mm -hmm. The Native Americans and the pilgrims. Do you think pilgrims. it would be necessary to go back and give a bit of the history of our country to the immigrants that are coming over now? Should they be informed about it? or just let it be a day off and a get together with friends? I, I think most of them, I would imagine, are already aware of it. I mean, I think it's, it's in the newspapers, it's in school, there's some talk about it. I, I, I don't think people don't know about the history of it. Yeah, yeah. But, but it is, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I think you're right, Duree, because I think there are so many things that we can be and are thankful for. And they, I think people coming into our country today have much, much to be thankful for, just to be able to get here mm -hmm. 
and to be part of our country and our civilization and participate in all the freedoms that uh, we have. It is something that they should be very thankful for. I mean, when you look at the situation in the world today and all the immigrants that have no place actually to go. You know, you had said um, over the river and through the woods was one of the songs. I'm sure you're familiar with them, the both of you. Uh, we learned that in school too. Do you think uh, grandma's house is not the focal point any longer for us, is it? Or, or is grandma coming to I think it might be less us? than it used to be, just in that people are spread out more mm -hmm. in the country. Mm -hmm. They're not, you know, quote, the olden days, extended family used to live closer to each mm -hmm. other. and. I think that's less true, but it's still, you know, true for a Quite lot of people. Parcel, right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I we've think, gone. Oh, I'm sorry. No, if I would say we've gone away from going to Grandma's house just because it gets to be too stressful for her to try to worry about what time do I get up to stuff the bird? What time do I get it in the oven? What time do I have to do this? And she's so focused on that. It's, yeah. you know, take your time, take a load off. I Enjoy your grandkids, you know? Right, exactly. <laughs> I love that thought. Well, we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back for segment three. Thank you. Okay, now that we're, uh, we're finished with sort of the traditions, let's give thanks for some of the things that we really are thankful for, and it's almost like a last minute. What are the, uh, some p special person that you are specifically thankful for, Michael? Um, well, I, I come from a unique family unit. My mom passed away when I was very young, so my father uh, really didn't, know how to boil a pot of water, frankly. So um, my grandmother and my father together as a team, they raised me and I'm very thankful for that because without them, I wouldn't be who I am today, so. How neat, how neat. Yes, uh, Dury? I would probably have to say my mom, just in that I'm very, uh, sorry, <laughs> I've got a copy. I'm very thankful that at the age of almost 86 that she is spry and with it, and I know a lot of people can't say that, so I feel very fortunate that she's in such good health, and um, I'm grateful for that. I don't take it for granted. I well, thank you for doing being near that age. I appreciate yeah. that, <laughs> yes, Kevin. Uh, certainly, family, uh, parents, grandparents have always been influential and, and always very special to me. Uh, all my brothers, but this year I am especially thankful for my wife. I'm married just about four months ago now. Congratulations. And, uh, you know, my wife, we've been together for about eight years, and she's really been the one who has pushed me to become a better person and to think about things a little bit uh, more thorough than, than I was in the past. So well, you're to be very... able to lock her up and, and keep her now for mine forever is <laughs> Right. Well, you're very fortunate. Yeah. <laughs> very fortunate. Well, what about a special place that you visited, Dury? Oh, my goodness. You know? I, I think I have been to some places out of the country, but um, I just think there's so many places in this country, and I, I don't even know what to tell you would be my most special place. I, I do like going, I lived up here longer than I was in Oklahoma, okay. but I still think of Oklahoma as home, and I do like going home. I think I, I'm with you that. I, I was born and brought up in Brooklyn, and I've been here over 40 years, but where do you come from? You always yeah, say right. where you were. Right. Does anybody else have a special place? Appropriately enough, uh, the country of Turkey oh, was, <laughs> so it's, it's very appropriate for our conversation, <laughs> right. actually. Um, I, I, it was the very first time that my wife and I went with her parents and then her brother and his, uh, his now wife um, on our first family vacation. So we went, uh, went to Turkey and spent a week together and there were no fights, there were no arguments, everything went really well. And it's uh, definitely one of those things that I remember forever. Mm-hmm. Do you have a name to add, Michael? Um, I'm, I'm actually, people who know me know that I'm very uh, fanatical about wine. And, uh, you know, in, in, in spirit of, the, of this holiday, it very, it's, a, it's a very Thanksgiving-based area in the country. But I, I was fortunate enough to get to Napa Valley and quite, you know, a, a few, several times, actually. And, you know, I took a drive from, uh, from San Diego up to, 
to San Francisco and that, that Highway 1 area uh, and, and those, those massive cliffs and, and just the whole Napa experience is just an incredible thing. And especially the wine tasting. And especially the wine. <laughs> <laughs> it's never well, a bad thing. Well, being a little bit materialistic now, is there any item or uh, something that we really cherish from either from our childhood or from now or that you're really thankful you held on to? Like I can look at a vase my mother gave me and she got it on her honeymoon in the 30s and uh, I would never part with it. Yeah, um, I, I actually just got... A, uh, one of my grandfather's handkerchiefs. And now I'm, I'm very lucky to be 33 and still have three healthy living grandparents. But my one grandfather who passed, uh, I have uh, one of his handkerchiefs that my grandmother gave me with his initials engraved on it. So How neat. that's one of those things that when I got, I kind of broke down a little bit and mm -hmm. uh, I'll, uh, I'll never lose it. That's one of those that I'll hang on to forever. Yeah, hang on to that. Uh -huh. And I just say old family photos, like, you know, my mom has now started she has a cedar chest at home that has, you know, pictures of her parents and their parents. And so she's starting to kind of distribute those to people now. So we'll have them. And, you know, it's just like you look, there's a, my father's mother as a young girl. My daughter still doesn't believe it isn't me. She said, that's a picture of you, Mom. I said, no, it's Mama Bryant. It's my dad's mom. She said, that looks just like you. I said, look at that clothes on it. Look at the picture. It's, it's so many years ago. Family but that's how much I guess yeah. I look like hers. So. How about that? Do you have anything, Michael? Um, well, I was fortunate enough I found my grandmother had, had uh, transcribed the recipes that we for, for both Thanksgiving and Christmas. And, and it's nice to bring those out and, and, and cook some of those meals. It's almost like her spirit comes through those, those recipes, which is kind of nice That's for a me, beautiful so. thought. Now let's talk about you. What ability are you thankful that you have, Kevin? It's a new one. Um, I just found out about six months ago that I love ballroom dancing. It's brand hey. new. It, it was something that I, I didn't want to look like a fool at the wedding for our first <laughs> dance. And so we started taking dance lessons together and we absolutely love it. And we still, to this day, once a week, we take our, our ballroom dance lessons and it has turned into our date night that we guarantee ourselves at least once a week we're going out and we're going to spend time to together it. and enjoy it. So that's been an, a really fun, newfound ability that I, I, I didn't think that I'd be able to dance at all. Mm -hmm. and, How uh, interesting. It's been a lot of fun, yeah. We'll have to watch. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> we have dancing at uh, Christmas with uh, one group. Maybe you can be there and show More than happy to. More than happy to. <laughs> okay. Well, we're just going to take a little break, which we always do in the third segment before we do continue with our final question about a little treat that uh, we can do and make. And all you need is caramel dip, a green apple, and nuts. And it takes all of five minutes to do. And voila, we come up with caramel apple nachos, they're called. And they are easy to make. You can slice the apples as thin as you want. And it's a healthy dish and something that you could bring as an hors d'oeuvre for uh, you know, for your Thanksgiving. And she brought it for us. That's our it. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Well, as our final question, uh, what do you think Americans should be most thankful for and why? Let's make it quick. We only have a minute. I have a minute. Um, well, I think given the last few years, the state of the economy that people have been struggling with, I think... Um, what it all boils down to, you know, money doesn't go that far, doesn't last forever. It's all about family and and love between them. And I think that's the most thing, the most important thing you should be thankful for. Very good. Doree? Um, I guess one thing I would say is just the, um, the ability to make decisions, because there's a lot of countries that you go to that you don't have uh, the, as freedom. Many, the freedom, yeah, freedom to make as many decisions as we are, have the opportunity to make. That is so yeah. true, Kevin. Most of us are lucky enough to be able to do what we want when we want to do it without having to seek permission, without having to worry about any type of negative results or anything happening because of it. So right. um, well, to have that freedom is great. 
you people sound like the four freedoms that uh, Norman Rockwell <laughs> had actually uh, painted about. Thank you so much. We'd like to thank everybody for coming and for sharing your thoughts with us. And we'd like to invite everybody to come to the barn where we have delicious meals served every day of the week. We do have salad bar on Tuesday and Thursday. And the cost is within everybody's reach. But because it's a hot meal every day, we must sign up or call and let Marina know. So God bless everybody, and God bless you all for coming and sharing your thoughts. Thank, Thank you again for, Thank having you us. for having us.